Have you ever wondered what Don Higgins Trophy Room looks like? Get ready to check out this episode of Whitetail Cribs as we head to Illinois to visit with Don Higgins and check out and hear some of his favorite hunting stories over the last 45 years. See all the bucks he's tagged, including the Buck Mel, which is the number two typical in the state of Illinois and number six all time in the Pope and Young record books. Hope you guys enjoy it. Let's get right into it. Here we go. Hey, welcome to my crib. I'm Don Higgins. Come on in. This is our new home we just built a couple years ago. Actually, we just moved in right before Christmas, but it's been about a two-year project. Um, I was out on the road consulting last winter, and my wife actually moved almost all by herself. Uh, over here, you can see the big kitchen table. My wife was really keen on the white cabinets and white trim and woodwork. I'm not a big fan of the white myself, but uh, I let her have her run with things on the inside of the house and, and I took care of the outside. So uh, we'll step out here on the patio. I'll show you some one of my favorite parts of the whole house. Uh, a couple of things about the patio and the outside. Yeah, I wanted uh, this house to be 100% maintenance free. Um, when we got done building this thing, I want to spend the rest of my time in, a, in the deer woods. We got a little overhang over part of the uh, uh, patio out here. Um, in the backyard, you can see We've got a food plot. This food plot was growing in sunflowers uh, until a couple weeks ago. I mowed those sunflowers down and I planted Real World's Deadly Dozen out there. You can see the big field of Real World switchgrass behind me. Uh, that switchgrass field has seen a lot of big bucks over the years. Um, the buck I shot, Smokey. A lot of you guys have seen the uh, video of Smokey. Smokey came out of this field the evening I shot him, if you've seen that video. Let's come in and see my trophy room. As you can see, my trophy room is right by the front door, right where it needs to be, the most important room of the house. So I got my desk here where all the, the work is done, a lot of real world business, uh, my consulting work done on this computer. Um, on the wall, you can see some of my early bucks. These are bucks that some of these are all oh, more than 40 years old. Um, the very first buck I ever shot in my life, I shot when I was 16 years old. And my first bow kill, shot just a couple years later, and some of my other earlier bucks. Um, you can see the two covers to North American Whitetail Magazine, um, which I was very blessed to be on the cover twice. I got those framed right there, pictures of my grandsons with my grandpa's old tractor there. You know, one of the neatest things about this room is I wanted some history here. Um, I wanted some nostalgia, if, if you will. And you can see in the ceiling up here, you can see the old hay track. And that hay track came out of my grandpa's barn. So I, I took that out, out of his old barn and, and installed it here in this room when we built it. And then there's an old stoplight here. And this stoplight came from the, the town of Gaze, which is just a few miles from here. It's where I grew up in that small town. And you know, a funny story about this light is that uh, when I was a kid and that, that light hung in the, the main intersection in the middle of town, well, I think I was probably one of the kids that threw rocks at that light and busted out the lenses. And then 40 some years later, I'm the guy that's got to fix those lenses and, and I replaced them. But uh, that's a little bit of local history and a little bit of family history here in my, my trophy room. And so I'll move over here to the main wall. This is where uh, uh, the majority of my bucks hang. A lot of these bucks, came from this farm and a lot of them didn't. So like on this bottom row here, the ones that came off of this property would be this buck, this buck, this buck, and this buck. These four right here in a row came off of this farm. Uh, the rest of them came within, uh, they, they've all came within about 10 miles or so of here. And then if we move up to the next row, uh, this buck came off of this farm, this buck came off of this farm, and this buck came off of this farm. And then those top three, the two on the ends came from this farm. So, uh, you know, a lot of, I only got 120 acres here that I've managed uh, for big deer. And there's been a lot of other bucks shot here, you know, by friends and family and such. But those, these are the ones that, uh, that I've shot here on this property. So you might remember this buck. I, I did a story in uh, Quality Whitetails magazine, the QDMA magazine. A few years back, I shot that buck in 2012, and I called him six by six by six. He was a six by six buck that was six years old, and uh, he's one of the first bucks that I, I just kept passing year after year to try to to get him to that you know world class status. 
he had been a 170 inch deer as a four year old, a five year old, and then as a six year old. He scored 176 the year I got him, but he really never did put on much from four to six. He, he remained about the same size. One thing really ironic about this deer is from the time he was three, he always had fork tines and such. And then in 2012, we had the real bad drought in the Midwest. And for whatever reason, I guess it's limited nutrition or whatever, but that year he had a clean rack, didn't have a single sticker. Uh, but that was the, the year I shot him. Uh, another uh, really interesting buck would be this one right here. I actually shot this buck in his bed. I was going into a stand to hunt one afternoon and I actually had just missed the buck the day before. He'd been here all fall and I was having a hard time getting a shot at him and then we got a really bad, brutal winter cold spell. The deer, I, I seen him three days in a row. The first day I seen him, he didn't come past me um, before dark, but I seen where he was coming from and I had a stand in that direction. So the next day I took a young man with me to run a video camera to sit in that stand and hopefully catch the buck. Well, sure enough, here he comes and I shoot an arrow right over his back. And I mean, it was, it was brutal cold. It was winter, I mean, it was below zero. And these deer were really hitting the food sources hard. Uh, so the third day, we're going in, the wind had switched, and we're going in to hunt a different stand. And on the way in, I'm thinking to myself, well, we're walking along the edge of a, a switchgrass field. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, I've seen that buck bedding in this switchgrass field a couple times. I ought to keep my eyes peeled out there. Maybe I'll see some antlers sticking up or something. And I kid you not, I, I thought that thought came to my head and I hadn't walked 50 yards and I look out and there's this buck's antler sticking up in the switchgrass. And the snow had drifted up to the edge of the field and, and then dropped off. And this buck was bedded right on the backside of that snowbank and his antlers were sticking up there. And I slipped up through that snowbank and the wind was just perfect. And as I stepped through that snowbank, that buck was 20 yards away and there wasn't a blade of grass between us and he's bedded with his back to me looking the opposite way. And uh, I sat and looked at him for just a second and I uh, already had my arrow knocked and, and, and just drew back and shot him right there in his bed. And that young man caught everything on video. That buck busted out of his bed, charged, he didn't know what happened, he charged right at me and I dodged to the side. And when I did, the buck seen me and he took off the other direction and uh, he filmed him running away and falling in the switchgrass about 100 or so yards away. But uh, probably, the, I think that's the only buck I ever shot in his bed. And I'll be the first to tell you there was a good bit of luck there, but uh, I'll take luck over skill any day. Um, right next to him is another buck with a unique story. This is a buck that uh, he was not killed on this farm, but he's a buck that uh, I watched grow up for six years. This buck actually had a, had a six-point rack as a yearling. Just a little bitty rack, you know, with real short tines, but obviously he was a yearling. And uh, I followed him for six summers, got his, his uh, picture in velvet each year. And finally, as a six-year-old, I seen he wasn't going to get any bigger. He was actually bigger the year before as a five-year-old. Where I was going to shoot that buck, I only had permission one property in his whole range. And my trail cameras told me that he was only there from about November 6th to the 20th. He would, he would come in there looking for hot does. Well, the year I decided to shoot him, November 6th, the wind was wrong, so I couldn't go in and hunt him. The 7th, the wind was wrong. But on November 8th, the wind was finally right. I went in to hunt that deer for the first time, and I shot him the first morning I ever hunted for him after watching that deer for six seasons. So that, that's a pretty interesting buck there, too. But uh, a lot of bucks on this wall, but today, when I'm targeting bucks, I'm trying to target bucks for this wall. And this wall is my top five. These bucks average about 204 inches, a little over 204 inches. Three of them are over 200 inches. The smallest of these is, is the buck I call Joey. He's 185 inches. And then we've got uh, Smokey, who is 206 inches. Uh, we got Mel, who's 221 inches. Um, my first 200, he scored 214, shot back in 2004. And then the buck I call Trump, I uh, shot uh, in 2017, he scores 193. So these are my, are my top five, and these are the kind of bucks I'm trying to target today. You know, hopefully I can add a few more of this caliber before I hang it all up. Um, th this buck, Joey, a, a good friend of mine, Joe Johnson, found the shed antlers to this buck and, you know, shared the information with me. And then... Uh, 
I, I got permission on a couple of properties. I, I just got on Google Earth and I zoomed in on where I knew Joe had found those sheds. And I thought, if I'm a, a big old mature buck living in that area, where am I going to hide? Where that you know nobody's going to bother me. And I picked out a couple of properties and I got permission. I hung trail cameras. And the first day I hung a trail camera for this buck, like an hour after I was in there hanging that camera, I had his picture. And uh, he, he ran by, he smelled where I was at, I was, smelled my ground scent. And he worked around, I think I got about 17, 18 pictures of that buck in front of the camera. Well, I, I thought he, he had enough extra going on. I thought he had a chance to really, you know, be something possibly even 200 inches one day. I, I didn't hunt him that first year. Um, I was kind of putting the pieces of the puzzle together. And the next year I didn't hunt him either. So I knew about that buck and I had his trail ca camera pictures for three summers. And then I decided, you know, he was probably not going to get any bigger than what he was and went in. And the very first morning that I ever hunted for this deer, I shot him. I was only in the stand maybe 15 minutes. Uh, there's a good video out on my YouTube channel about the hunt for Joey. You can, you can see the details, but uh, that's another buck that I shot on the first hunt for him. And that's probably the shortest hunt I've ever been on, 15 minutes, and that, that deer was, was down. So... Uh, Really exciting. He's the smallest of my top five at 185 inches. Um, Smokey here is a deer that kind of put me on the map in a, at a different level, if you will. I shot him in 2017. He was six and a half years old, but I gained quite a bit of attention before I even killed that deer because the season before, I passed him five times on video, and he scored 186 inches that year, and uh, he had such a big frame, he even looked bigger than that. Um, and, and I put that video footage out there and, and he was just a homebody buck. He, he didn't leave my farm hardly. It didn't matter if it was January or July or November, that deer was here on the home farm. And, uh, so I, I decided to, to pass him there as a five-year-old scoring 186 and got his sheds right here on the corner uh, or two sets of his sheds. So that's how I know what he scored. Uh, the next summer I thought, man, if that deer could just put on some good G4s, and maybe a little bit of tine length, a little bit of mass, he has a chance to hit 200 inches. Well, that's exactly what he did. And the, the next summer, I, I got those first trail camera photos and videos, and he, he was an absolute giant. I went on several podcasts that summer, and I predicted that I was going to kill my second 200-inch buck. And uh, the, the, he was uh, going to be the buck I called Smokey, the one I'd passed the season before. Well, that's exactly what happened. Uh, the second hunt for, for him, I got him shot. I actually seen him on the first hunt. He came out of the switchgrass field that I showed you earlier behind the house, and he hit a clover fire break, and instead of feeding towards me where I was in my blind, he fed away, and I didn't get a shot that day. But uh, the next time we had the right wind, I slipped in. It was about four days later. He comes out of that switchgrass field again, but this time he comes out real close to the blind, feeds along the edge of the food plot, and I slip an arrow in him. Um, there's a video of this story on my YouTube channel as well of this buck. So on the other wall, we'll start down here at the bottom. This uh, first one is, uh, is my first 200-inch buck, scored 214. I shot him back in 2004. Um, I seen that buck four times from four different tree stands. I seen him on November 6th, November 7th, and November 11th. And then I end up killing him on December 1st. Extremely blessed to kill that deer. You know, I'd always dreamed of killing a world-class buck, but I wanted to do it a certain way. I wanted to kill that buck just going about his business, doing what big bucks do when they think nobody's looking. I didn't want to shoot one on a deer drive, running by with his tongue hanging out or anything like that. And I was extremely blessed for that to happen that year in 2004. Um, gained quite a bit of attention with, with that buck as well. Um, kind of set the stage, uh, you know, for my career, if you will. I'd been writing for North American Whitetail Magazine and Deer and Deer Hunting and some of the others for a while, but, uh, you know, that buck basically gave me a lot of credibility uh, with my articles and such. Then uh, the far buck would be the buck I called Trump. Shot him in 2017, the same year that I shot Smokey. In fact, I shot him on the very next hunt, back-to-back -back hunts, I shot Smokey on November or October 15th, and then on October 19th, the next time I went hunting, I, I shot Trump. He scores 193, uh, seven and a half years old. 
He's a buck that um, I didn't pay much attention to until the year before when he was six and a half years old. Uh, he was six and a half years old in the summer of 2016 when uh, President Trump was, was running for election um, and was running against Hillary Clinton. Well, I was a big Trump fan, so I named that, that buck Trump. Very difficult, probably one of the toughest bucks I've ever killed. He just had a wide home range. He covered a lot of territory. You know, I, I had pictures of that buck in areas three miles apart. And at one point, I had pictures just 17 hours apart, but they were three miles apart in 17 hours. He was, he was just a, had no pattern whatsoever. And the fall I, I killed him, I just decided instead of jumping around all these different properties where that buck lived, I'm just going to camp on one property and I'm just going to sit there until he shows up. And it took 10 hunts. The, on the 19th, when I finally ended up getting a shot at him and seen him for the first time, first time I ever laid eyes on him, on the 19th, it was my 10th hunt that fall um, for him. And it was out on a little fence row in the middle of nowhere. He was actually the first deer I had seen in those 10 hunts. Um, I talk about discipline all the time. If you listen to my podcast or whatever, but uh, he, he just, he really challenged me as a hunter to think outside the box and do things a little bit different than any buck I'd ever hunted before. And then the last buck on the wall is Mel. He's the buck I shot in 2020. He, he's a buck, he was only four and a half years old when I shot him, but he was big enough that uh, I couldn't let him go. Uh, typically I let him go on this farm until they're six and a half, but it, that just wasn't gonna happen with this one. And one reason for it was he was covering a really wide range there was a, a friend of mine about three miles to the west of here had his picture. And then another friend had seen him three miles to the east of me. So he was covering a wide range, and my farm was right in the middle. He spent a lot of time here. But uh, I got a chance to shoot him on the, the morning of October 30th and, and made good on it. Uh, great video on that hunt as well on my YouTube channel if you want to check that out. But uh, the interesting thing about him is I named him when I, when he was a two-year-old, he had a clean six-by-six six rack and, and just a really not, the best two-year-old I've ever seen in the wild. And I thought, man, that, that deer's got a lot of potential. If he keeps on, he could challenge Mel Johnson's world record. And so I started calling him Mel after Mel Johnson. Well, as, as luck would have it, um, after I killed the buck, I took him and had him officially scored. And he is now the number two archery buck in Illinois next to Mel Johnson's world record. And I had no idea at the time either, but he's the number six all-time typical by archery. I, and I never even dreamed that I would ever kill a buck in the top 10, but uh, that's exactly uh, what happened here with Mel. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to support what we're doing here at Exodus, be sure to hit the subscribe button or head to our website, exodusoutdoorgear.com and use the code whitetail to save 10% off our entire site for a limited time. You can save 10% on the Exodus render of Ryzen 4G LTE camera backed by our five-year no BS warranty or our brand new Exodus MMT arrows, which are tailored built to your hunting specs. Be sure to check that out on our website. Until next time, see ya.